The search for the Higgs boson was one of the main reasons for scientists to build the LHC. If it's found, it'll confirm our explanation of how particles come to have mass in the standard model of particle physics, whereas if it isn't found, it'll mean the standard model of particle physics will need substantial revision. However, the Higgs boson isn't the only novel phenomenon that scientists will be looking for at the LHC. There's also been speculation that the proton collisions could provide evidence for several new kinds of physics, including the possibility that our world has more than three spatial dimensions. Some physicists have been uh, playing around, I guess since about 1920, with the idea that there might be additional dimensions of space. In modern theories, there are quite a lot of people speculating that there could be extra curled up space dimensions, where if you went in this way, you'd go around a circle and come out the other way. And those circles can be surprisingly large, not subatomic sizes. They could be as, as large as half a millimetre, and we wouldn't know about them yet because uh, ordinary matter can't make it into these extra dimensions, which is why you can't fall into them. So the original idea was that these extra dimensions will be incredibly tiny and uh, undetectable in any foreseeable experiment. But as time has gone on, people have said, well, you know, maybe they could be a bit bigger. And indeed, it is possible that they might be big enough to be seen at the LHC. If the universe does indeed have more than three spatial dimensions, some scientists predict that the consequences at the LHC will be striking. Um, one of the interesting things about extra dimension models is that it provides a link between gravity and the rest of the uh, forces that we know about. And in these theories, because the, the shape of space-time is determined by gravity, um, extra dimensional theories allow you to have very strong gravity and very strong gravity allows you to see strong gravitational effects and the strongest gravitational effect and the most funky thing to see would be um, the creation of black holes. Uh, and these would be exotic obviously uh, and uh, they would be very short-lived, they would just evaporate immediately after production. And the reason that this is possible is that uh, black holes decay by Hawking radiation as predicted by um, our famous Cambridge physicist Stephen Hawking and so you would expect these black holes to decay instantaneously into a shower of very high energy particles which we can detect in Atlas. In a typical collision the quarks come in, collide and scatter in a sort of two body pattern and so you expect to see events where the particles emerge in jets back to back like this but in black hole events you've formed a spherical event horizon and now radiation is coming off it in all directions and so you see very high energies of particles coming off in a sort of uniform pattern with a characteristic temperature and those properties would allow us to distinguish the black holes from ordinary events. Now I know whenever I talk to people about black holes they worry that we're going to create one which is going to destroy the planet. Um, I think we can reassure people on that because the sort of collisions we have going on in the LHC have already been happening around the planet due to cosmic rays bombarding the upper atmosphere. This experiment has been done by nature for four billion years already. The Earth has not disappeared, so there is no danger. As we've heard, the LHC will test how physics works on very small scales. However, it also promises to help explain the behaviour of some of the largest objects in the universe, galaxies and clusters of galaxies. In order for the motions of the stars within the galaxy, in order for the motions of the galaxies relative to each other, in order for them to be understood, there has to be some additional matter pulling them uh, beyond the stuff that is actually doing the shining. So what could this be? The speed at which galaxies rotate is determined by the distribution of mass inside them. Strangely though, the behaviour of the galaxies we observe in the night sky implies that they contain far more mass than we can actually see. The unseen mass is what physicists label dark matter, but the true nature of this substance is as yet unknown. The reason for our belief in dark matter, of course, primarily from astrophysics and astronomy, where galaxies are seen to rotate and you can't explain their rotational behaviour without invoking matter that you can't see, that's not luminous. The matter that uh, we are made of uh, comprises only about 5% of the matter and energy that we believe is in the universe. Most people expect dark matter to be some exotic form of matter not made out of quarks or protons. So the properties of this matter have to be that it's not luminous, which means it doesn't uh, emit electromagnetic radiation, so it must not uh, interact with the electromagnetic force. Um, it can't be strongly interacting, or it would be gobbled up into nuclei. 
So, given these constraints, what kind of substance could make up the dark matter in the universe? One of the ways that particle physics theorists have predicted uh, the whole system hangs together is by a concept called supersymmetry. Supersymmetry is a theory which predicts that for each of the particles we've observed in the world around us, there's a partner particle that has so far not been observed. Scientists believe that these so-called superparticles could make up the dark matter in the universe. Furthermore, they hope that evidence for the existence of superparticles could be seen at the LHC. The exciting thing about supersymmetry is that it actually postulates that for every particle we know will have a superpartner. For example, an electron would have a super electron. Uh, logically speaking, should have equal mass, but since we've never seen a super electron at the mass of an electron, and we've not seen any of these particles in the, uh, uh, the data that we've accumulated so far uh, from the accelerators, the masses are high. And one of the big search teams on the LHC is, is looking for supersymmetric particles. If the LHC is successful in finding supersymmetric particles, we'll be a step closer to determining the identity of dark matter and solving the mysteries of galactic motion. After 10 years of planning and construction work, contributions from thousands of scientists, and in the order of £5 billion worth of investment, the LHC looks set to provide answers to some of our deepest questions about the universe. The experts agree that it will be one of the most important scientific endeavours of our generation. We don't know what the LHC is going to find. Uh, we have good reasons for thinking that in some sense it's going to complete the standard model with a with the Higgs as being somehow the, the capstone on the top of the arch. We also think that it's going to take us beyond the standard model, although we don't know what direction it's going to take us. It might take us in the direction of extra dimensions or direction of supersymmetry and dark matter, we just don't know. The experiments like CMS uh, uh, are uh, actually opportunities uh, which uh, don't come very often. Once in a generation you are sitting on an experiment uh, uh, which uh, may alter uh, the way we look at how nature works uh, at the fundamental level, so it's very exciting.